In 1982, the Gottlieb Corporation wanted to make a name for themselves in the video game arcade industry. So they got game designers Warren Davis and Jeff Lee to come together and take one of Lee's childhood ideas of a long-nosed snot shooter and try to turn it into a video game. Now for simplicity's sake, and just because every game seemed to be some sort of shooter back then, they decided to drop the snot shooting element and went with a much simpler objective, similar in the way that Pac-Man went with just dodging every enemy that came your way and doing some arbitrary tasks to progress through each level. In this case, hopping from cube to cube and changing the colors on this isometric pyramid. Now, this game originally went by the title of Cubes, but that's kind of boring and not very catchy, so they decided to go with at sign exclamation point number sign question mark at sign exclamation point. Yeah, that didn't blow over so well either. So they decided to try to give their character a name. First they gave him Hubert, but then they realized, you know, like the original title and called him Cubert. And then just decided to give him a really weird spelling because Mortal Kombat is cool. And crazy. Like King K. Rule. Yeah. Anyway, Cubert was a massive success. In 2008, Guinness World Records listed it as the 16th most influential arcade game of all time. And who blames them? The game was amazing. Probably his greatest appeal to me was that he swore every time he died. Very appetizing to the kids. I'll get more into the details in a bit. For now, though, flash forward to 1999 when Sony gets a version of the game for the PS1. Sega gets it for the Dreamcast a year later, and I get it a year after that. Trust me when I say it was an experience like no other, and I mean that both as a nostalgic compliment and as a complete insult. Now, my disc is a little mistreated from years of me being seven. Or something like that. So I hope this thing still works. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on with the Let's Play, shall we? Uh, hang on, guys. There we go. Hey everybody, Austin on Sugar here, and we're playing Cubert for the Dreamcast. Even though this is based off the original arcade version, but obviously with a lot more animation involved. I'm sure you can find some videos of the actual game online somewhere. Yeah, there. And pretty much, it, it was just such a great game that at the time that it was made, it was ported to almost every single console under the sun. Except the Nintendo 64, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> but that's not important. 
The objective of Qbert, as I'm sure you've heard around five seconds ago, obviously not recorded at the same time. Oh, I shouldn't be admitting my secrets. Whatever. So, the objective of Qbert is to hop around on this pyramid thing, this isometric 3D view pyramid, end quote, and change all of the cubes to a different color. And that color, as you can see there in the left corner of the screen, in this case would be blue for level one round two. And I have everything up to level six memorized, so um, you got any questions about any specific color scheme? Ha <laughs> ha! I'm not gonna answer you anyway. So pretty much no one really understood what was going on with the, with in the case of Qbert, because not really much is that explained, I guess you could say. But pretty much the objective is obvious, and also the fact that you need to avoid enemies is rather obvious. So, um... Yeah, no one ever needed to question why a random purple snake and purple uh, guy shouting, what are they saying? I assume, right. So, as they climb up the sides of the pyramid and, and the other stuff falls down, I mean, pretty much the entire objective is pretty obvious. But, um, turns out there was actually a storyline for this game. <laughs> As I'm sure you must have seen, there, there in fact was quite a bit of a storyline for this game. Um, I'm pretty sure I, you, you saw from the intro of the game, not my video, that, uh, of pretty much exactly what was going on. But, uh, throughout this, a number of enemies, such as that one right there named Sam, I think, Random green fireball guy, we'll go with that. Um, have sort of taken over this world under the leadership of a giant purple snake by the name of Coily. And Coily hops around and, well, tries to kill Qbert because he can. And he's the only thing in this entire game that actually targets in on you. Yeah. I'll get more into the actual names of the enemies as we progress in the levels, but for now, I'm just gonna back out and say that each level has a different drive, I guess you could say. So that in level one, your objective was to change it from color A to color B. And now, you need to change it from color A to color B, and then the final color you need to change it to is color C. So it's slightly more complicated. The other levels get even worse. So uh, when we get to that point, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll be crying, guys. But uh, that's 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 not important. What you're seeing here is an effect of the green ball. The only enemy never be given a name, unless you want to count ball enemies as not being a name for the ball enemies. But the green ball pretty much stops time for a given amount of time. It's sort of your power pellet for the game. You know, stopping time. Turning the ghost involved. It's all one and the same because you can walk through enemies whenever you're under that spell of whatever. So now, more on just these enemies because they're all so creative. The random uh, purple guys coming up the sides. The ones coming from the right are known as Ugg. I guess because it sounds like pig. Shut up, Tuxi. Meanwhile, the ones coming from the left who are a bit rounder, uh, they. they they're called wrong way, if I'm not mistaken. But really, they should just be called the wrong way guys because they both come from the wrong way. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> anyway, the purple snake obviously is called Coily, but oddly enough, when he's falling down from the sky, he's not known as Coily. He's just called one of the ball enemies. The rest of which being the red balls that fall from the sky as well. <laughs> as to why exactly they fall from the sky, yeah. <laughs> I guess apples. So, with that in mind, Ugg and Wrongway climb up the sides of the pyramid the same way. In fact, they're actually programmed to fall similar to the way that the red balls fall down the pyramid. Problem is, because they're coming from awkward directions, their hitboxes are very bad. And here we have the ball enemies! The red ball enemies being the ball enemies that are really ball enemies. The purple one there always pretty much when it gets to the bottom of the pyramid, after it, it also auto-targets on you, will turn into Coily the Snake. Coily the Snake will chase after you pretty much relentlessly until you hop on one of those little frisbee disc things off on the side. I wanted that green ball so bad. 
Anyway, when, once you jump on one of the frisbee discs, you'll be uh, sent back up to the top of the pyramid, and Coily, the idiot he is, will jump off the edge, only to come back in the purple ball form in a couple seconds later, but that's not important. Of course, the final two enemies are the uh, green fireball dudes, one of which goes by the name of Slick, and the other by the name of Sam. I'm just assuming that Slick would be the uh, one with shades. And Sam is the one with the really derpy look on his face. So now that you know all the enemies, I can throw this manual off to the side. And actually worry about the actual game now. If you'll notice, Slick and Sam, when they come on screen, they do a different thing depending on which level they're in. In, in level one, the entire way through, when they hopped on a, uh, that is to say, in the only round they appeared in, which was round four, whenever either one of them, one of them would hop on the pyramid, they would change it to the third color that wasn't in use. Of course, every pyramid has three colors, so um, now that we get to see all three of them, the one that you start on yellow, turn it to blue, change it to pink, and I'm gonna die. Game over style, aren't I? Um, kinda tense? Anyway! Green ball, save me now! Also, at the end of every round where you don't use all the discs, you sort of get extra points for the discs. So with round one, we just sort of changed from color A to color B, so if Slick and Sam appeared on the pyramid, they would change it to color C. In rounds one and two of level two, then they would change it to the last, the most previous color, I guess you could say. But what, what a nice twist that the game developers decided to add to uh, each level is that Slick and Sam would do different things after round two. So in the case of level two, when you hop on a uh, pyramid once, it'll change it to one color and then another. Uh, rounds one and two, they would change it back one. Rounds three and four, they would change it back to the starter color. Similarly, in round three, or in level three, where anytime you hop on the cube, it changes back to a previous color, which is really annoying. So in this case, if I hop on gray, ow. If I hop on gray, it'll turn black. If I hop on black, it'll turn gray. Either way, and I just want to get them all black. So this is when the game starts getting a bit more complicated. But as you saw there, Slick and Sam, when they hop down in round two, they always end up changing the color of the block to the other color, pretty much. Whereas, uh, when we get to, uh, round three and round four, when Slick and Sam hop on the cubes in those levels, they will always change it back to color A, the one you started with. Sort of complicated, but <laughs> not nearly as complicated as the other stuff we're gonna get into. I wish I could've gotten that green ball. So speaking of level three, now every time you hop on a, uh, on a cube, it changes its color. So, you can kind of be your own undoing here. And what's really annoying is the sheer amount of frustration that's gonna come out of only having that one block left on the other side of the pyramid and having to get there. This can get kind of annoying, obviously. Very quickly, my bad. I have no idea how I'm gonna survive this. And somehow I did. Eat that, Texty! Also, another really weird thing about levels 3 and onward is that they changed the color scheme to weird almost cell shading effect, which is kind of weird on each level. I think this is only in the Dreamcast and PlayStation port of it, though. Or not port, but, you know, port of classic mode, I should say. Because this is the same thing that we went through. This is like the same colors as uh, the... Uh, second level of the game, and also the first uh, level round of level two, anyway. So this really it is kind of just an odd color scheme change, but it's definitely the same level. Which gets really weird once you get to the later ones, and you get to see like this is our first level again. But look at the weird sh shading effects. It's just, yeah, I don't get it. But anyway, as you can see here, Slick and Sam are no longer changing the the color as much uh, in the sense that they're the only ones who can change it and or walk on a particular square and not change the color. Uh, 
Well, that wasn't exactly convenient, but I, I will do with what I can. <laughs> now, if you notice there, the Slick and Sam start showing up on top of each other so that sometimes you'll get, like, a, a double Sam on, on the pyramid at one time. That can get really, really, really annoying after a while. Especially in the next level. Welcome to level four. Ugh. So in this level, when you hop on a square, or when you hop on a cube, right? I'm sorry, it changes to color B. And then when you hop on it again, it changes to color C. And when you hop on it again, it changes back to color B again. When Slicker Sam hops on a particular square, they will send it back in the alphabet one color. Well, not the alphabet, but you get what I'm saying. So now they always pretty much do what they did at the end of level three. Well, now they've got two colors to work with. Of course, in uh, rounds three and four of this place, though, they are going to start, um, you know, just sending them straight back to the original color. The weird thing is, and I'm not sure if this is just how they set up the levels or not, but the classic mode levels, and I'm pretty sure considering this is a pretty accurate port to the original, this should be the way that the original was as well, is that whenever you, um, whenever I see, get to round, round, round three, or, sorry, level three, round two or so, I'm convinced and guaranteed almost to make it to at least round level five. I always get those two mixed up. So, I mean, I'm not sure if that's level design or not, because it certainly seems like Coily is going a lot slower here than he was in the last time we saw this level layout. Color scheme, whatever. That would be, um, round four of ra level two. And I hate that level, by the way, because that's always where I would get a game over when I was younger. Like, always get a game over when I was younger there. Oh, and apparently I've been wrong way over there, too, but they didn't come out. Again, it seems like they're almost intentionally making the level design easier so that you have a chance. I guess that's forgiving of them, benevolent even, but I don't really care <laughs> because the game is suitably hard anyway. But hard in a good way. This is back when games were fair to have difficulty. Nowadays, I don't think anyone understands what that even means. Yeah, difficulty. There's such a thing. But anyway. So you're probably curious why I'm even doing Qbert specifically, because I was really gung-ho about doing Qbert all of a sudden for no reason. Especially since I'm normally terrible at this game. Shut up, Texty. See? Like I said, shut up, Texty. So, with that in mind, though, I mean... Okay, I'm pretty bad at this game normally, but, um, the reason specifically why I'd want to, uh, play through it now is because, as I'm sure you all know, if you're even remotely interested in my videos, then you must also be remotely interested in Wreck-It Ralph, which is coming out in two weeks! Oh my god! And in Wreck-It Ralph, there's a certain point where Qbert sort of plays what seems to be, like, almost a major role, I guess. So, I'm getting this out of the way now so I don't have to explain it in another dramatic intro video, which I probably will do anyway, but that's not important. Um, I really, really, really want to cover this game because if Qbert has any role at all in Wreck-It Ralph, then I want to be here saying, in before the Qbert fanatics. And also for a point I'll make later, but that's not important now. Welcome to level five! Woohoo! This level is painful. <laughs> it's funny because I never seem to have trouble with it. Maybe it's because they're extra super uber forgiving with all the discs. Look at all of them. <laughs> you could play frisbee and never run out of frisbees with this. That was close. But, I mean, I mean seriously, they're, they're being overly forgiving. But I, I guess I shouldn't be ungrateful because I, I needed it. <laughs> Bottom line is this game is really well designed. I'd say, because, you know, they, they offer stuff like the green ball, so it's not just, like, uberly, insanely, painfully challenging. By the way, this happens a lot. <laughs> well, you've got that one extra square, and trying to maneuver around enemies, <laughs> and trying to figure out how to get everything colored right. This is like a puzzle game at its, like, finest. Only not. Because this isn't that fine. This is 
a Dreamcast game that's slightly outdated. Sometimes, and I guess that's why they have two discs on top of the pyramid, because you'll never go back up there, it seems, is so that you can always just... That's that's where you can change your, um... Sort of go half and whatever the word is for it. I don't know. Make it possible for you to complete the stage. That's it. My biggest problem with these later levels is that if it weren't for that little, um... Change to this color thing in the corner there. I wouldn't be able to remember which color I was trying to change the pyramid to, and I'd be walking around in circles, forgetting entirely what I'm doing. Especially once Slick and Sam start showing up even more, which they do. It gets fun. Looking forward to it. Well, actually, I'm sorry. I already passed the level where they're most annoying, which was uh, le level two, round four. <laughs> The stage I couldn't get past as a kid. By the way, did I mention I hate Slick and Sam in these levels? Because they always show up right when you think you're almost done. And now it's going to be such a hassle trying to get back there with the giant purple snake on my tail. And that's one problem I have with it, and I guess it's just a matter of the game being slightly dated, is that I'm pretty sure the, um, the hitboxes on a lot of enemies are really awkward. So that, for example... Ooh, Grimo! Use, use, use to its advantage! Feel the power of the rainbow technicolor seizure in the background. Sam! Will I do it? Will I make it? Will I be able to... Why must you do that to me? Cutting it close, cutting it close. Come on, yeah! Let's, let's color this thing. Now, keep in mind, I was saying earlier how they're being oh so incredibly forgiving with the number of frisbees they give you. And here I have none right now. Ugh. You know, actually, what's really annoying is sometimes when I'm about to jump on the last square... That's when Slick and Sam show up. It's really annoying. And sometimes they're helpful, don't get me wrong. Sometimes they're really helpful, like right there. Because they can give you a way out. I can't believe I did that. Well, I'll explain it more once we get onto the actual adventure half of the game, because there is an adventure mode in Qbert. Yay, Austin, Austin, Austin is my high score. And when we get to adventure mode, stuff will happen, I assure you. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. That's where the bulk of the game is anyway, and I'm talking way over limits, so I should probably shut up now. Shut up, Texty. And, yeah, but uh, I'll see you guys next time in the adventure mode! Or, sorry, <clears throat> in the adventure mode! Is that enough echo for you? Okay, see you in part two. Bye.